everybody, and welcome to our week 15 mini lecture on trauma-informed care. So trauma-informed care acknowledges the per pervasiveness of trauma uh, while focusing on how trauma may affect a child's life. Um, it provides safety for all, an atmosphere of security and trust, and really highlights compassionate collaboration with the child. It is taking a strengths-based approach and view um, and incorporating that into your work with the child. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's a strengths-based approach. It recognizes that many what we as adults view as negative behaviors or coping skills that, that the child has used to adapt and survive from the trauma that the child has experienced. Uh, it also seeks to be culturally competent, which is where that culturally relevant pedagogy really comes into play in those culturally relevant practices. Um, and it also incorporates or requires a paradigm shift from what's wrong with you to what happened to you to what's right with you. So the what's wrong with you is a very negative approach. What happened to you is more of a trauma-informed approach. And then what's right with you moves into resiliency. And um, those resilient practices and incorporating those to benefit the child uh, cope and have them cope with the trauma that they have experienced so that they be can become well-adjusted adults. Trauma-informed care is relational as it is system, its system is one that seeks collaboration and partnership with children. Um, it emphasizes the understanding of symptoms and behaviors as well as healing within a healthy relationship. Um, it's very attachment focused and secure attachment. There are six principles to a trauma informed approach. Those six principles are safety, trustworthy and transparency, peer support, collaboration and mutuality, empower voice and choice, and cultural responsiveness. So, with safety, we're creating a welcoming and calming environment. Uh, we maintain respectful physical and emotional boundaries while providing a safe place to talk if the child would like to talk and talk and is able to talk. Um, if the child is not able to talk, then we encourage storytelling via art, storybooks, puppets, drawings, et cetera, um, role-playing, things like that. With trustworthy and transparency, it is very, very important that you stay true to your word. Uh, do not make empty promises, be as honest as possible, and be a safe place and a respectful listener for that child to go to. With peer support, it's important to encourage respectful engagement with peers. Uh, with collaboration, offer acceptance and understanding. Do not judge. And really, it's that listening aspect of being a safe place and a respectful listener. Um, then empower voice and choice, empower the child to make their own choices, as well as to speak up when they see injustices done to them. Uh, this helps facilitate autonomy, as well as give options, give choices and alternatives for uh, throughout the child's day. And then finally, there is that cultural responsiveness, which incorporates being knowledgeable on the healing traditions of different cultures, as well as linking families to community supports and resources that may be of benefit to them and their child. So thank you all for watching this mini lecture. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, just want to chat, please, please, please reach out to me via message or email. Um, I am here to support you, your learning, um, and your experience throughout this course. Uh, yeah, please let me know if you have any questions, and that is all for this lecture.